Before today, you may have never heard someone say this before, but I love fall protection. While those reasons are for another day, I, ha I must admit I have a problem, more of a challenge when it comes to answering simple fall protection questions such as, when is fall protection required on a roof? I've been known to turn that into a 20 minute discussion on the topic. The most common question I get is, am I safe? Or some variation of, are they safe? Is she safe? Is he safe? This presentation summarizes my response to that question. So you ask me, am I safe? Before I answer that question, you'll need some background. OSHA creates regulations for personal protective equipment, or PPE. These regulations are created for nearly 155 million workers, so they're not always clear. So you ask me, in the field, am I safe? This presentation will cover three items for you to consider when answering this question. Before I get into the rest of my presentation, let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Tom Kramer, and in case you're wondering, I'm not related to this Kramer or these Kramers. You may have noticed that I spell my name this way, although it's pronounced like this. The reasons are for another day, though. After going to school here for a couple of engineering degrees, I joined LJB and found out that they were doing some innovative facility design in something called fall protection. I was a little confused. I had just come out of engineering in school and thought that fall protection was safety. But I soon found out that fall protection was safety plus engineering. After doing this since 1995, I've been involved in it so long that when I see a picture like this, I don't say ouch because of the gas price, I say ouch because of the lack of fall protection. Since I believe so passionately about these two aspects of fall protection, I am registered as a professional engineer and as a certified safety professional. Fortunately, I'm not the only one at, LJ, at LJB that believes in the connection between safety and engineering for fall protection. We have two members from our board of directors that are duly registered as safety and engineering professionals, and including myself, a total of seven at LJB. I sit on the committee that develops this. I have presented at several national conferences multiple times, as well as regional ones. And when I talk fall protection, I remind the audience that fall protection equals safety, but also engineering. There are two primary sources of information when it comes to fall protection. First, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, is the controlling federal regulation for worker health and safety. OSHA has regulations if you're doing maintenance, and quite a few of them deal with fall protection. To make it even more confusing, they have a separate set of regulations for construction, and again, quite a few deal with fall protection. The other reference material when it comes to fall protection is the American National Standards Institute, or ANSI. The main difference being that these are consensus standards and not regulations, which means they are technically not law. The fall protection code that I previously mentioned released some new standards back in 2007. One of these standards, ANSI Z359.1, was a revision, while the other four are completely new. Furthermore, there are three more standards that have an effective date of November, 20, November 2009. This brings a total of eight ANSI Z359 standards published. But the fall protection code isn't the only place with fall protection standards. Here are others that you might need to consider. Let's just say at the end of his term, the economic crisis, crisis wasn't the only thing that had President Bush worried. So when many people hear this and think fall protection, they might understand the, the safety and the engineering part, but they might also start to think that it equals confusion. Then you ask the question, am I safe? For this presentation, I'll cover three items I like to consider when thinking of this question. First, we commonly ask attendees at our presentations for the first word they think of when we say fall protection. Over 50% said harness. I was somewhat skeptical, so I asked a really smart person and got this answer. You might be asking, how does this affect the question, am I safe? Another smart person once said statistics are a lot like bikinis. What they reveal is suggestive, but what they conceal is vital. If we go back to 1994, OSHA released regulations for fall protection equipment. Equipment sales have doubled since that time, so we can safely say that there are no shortages for equipment. If we look at statistics since 1995, we can see that there were 573 fall fatalities that year, and it has increased to 733 in 2007. This is an increase of 28%. Over the same time, overall workplace fatalities dropped 12%. A drop of 12% versus an increase of 28%. So your question is, am I safe? 
If fall fatalities increased 28% at the same time that workplace fatalities decreased 12% while the equipment sales have doubled, fall protection equipment does not seem to be the right answer. My second point deals with your anchorage. OSHA limits the weight of workers using fall protection equipment to 310 pounds. I can tell you through personal experience that folks that are over 310 pounds aren't always in the best of shape to be using fall protection equipment, but that's a discussion for another day. What a lot of people don't realize is the point that they need to, to which they need to attach needs to support more than 310 pounds, and that is due to gravity. OSHA states that anchorages need to support 5,000 pounds, or about enough to support a truck. Don't be fooled into thinking anything can support 5,000 pounds. A step won't support 5,000 pounds. A vent pipe will not support 5,000 pounds. And yes, a few bucket of rocks won't support 5,000 pounds. So when you ask the question, am I safe, I always check to see where you're attached. My third point comes when you tell me, at least I'm tied off. Let me tell you that tied off does not equal protection. And let me reiterate that. Tied off does not equal protection. This person is tied off. Are they protected? This person is tied off. Is he protected? And in case you're wondering if he made it down, that's a story for another day. This person is tied off. Is he protected? I'll discuss that one in a minute. The reason that tied off does not equal protection is based on the ease of use of fall protection equipment. Sure, even kids can use safety glasses and hard hats, and quite frankly, they're easy. Fall protection equipment is highlighted by its infrequent use and a lot of options. Infrequent use and a lot of options is a recipe for disaster. So you go back to my question, am I safe? In summary, my first point was that OSHA has to create regulations for nearly 155 million workers, and over the past 12 years, overall workplace fatalities have decreased 12%, while fall fatalities have increased 28%. Even the smart people sometimes incorrectly jump to equipment first. My second point was that OSHA limits equipment to 310 pounds, but the anchorage needs to support 5,000 pounds. My third point is that being tied off does not equal protection. How do I know this? Well, if you go back to this picture, I can count one, two, three, four, five, six items that are wrong with this fall protection system just from this picture. So when you ask, am I safe, I promise that no will not immediately be my answer, but I will ask you to think about these three points. Thank you for your time.